Namaste, and welcome to our continuing series, Explorations in Savitri, with our beloved Alokai. We continue in Book 3, the Book of the Divine Mother, Canto 4, The Vision and the Moon. And I believe we are still on the last line of yes. 344, page yes, that's 344. Right. So as we have been seeing that while we as human beings try to change the world by outer means, machineries, rules, regulations, systems, governments, and so on and so forth, the divine changes by changing the DNA. So that's his way. So always in every, every time there is a divine advent, you will see that the, there are representatives of the old consciousness who work in a certain way. Uh, it's not about it being good or bad, something which was good in its own time. When its time is over, that's what is called as Dharma Siglani. It was good in its own time, but it, is loses, it loses its relevance, significance, becomes dated, becomes uh, uh, stifles the further growth of mankind. So that's when something new comes and this new comes in the form of children. So in every age, you see the age of uh, the Krishna stories. Who are Krishna's actual friends, you know, those ordinary, so-called ordinary Gwalbal, you know, they become his, because they are embodying a new way of life, a new states of consciousness, even the Pandava brothers. And this is the battle always between the old and the new. But now these children have to come who will embody a new state of consciousness. So we come back for a moment on the word amber, which we had ah, yes. yesterday. So... Amber also conveys, I mean, if you see the color, it's yellow with a touch of brown. So I went back to what Nalida has spoken about oh, good. it. So he speaks about yellow. Of course, uh, he speaks about coming right down to the uh, subtle physical, where they are waiting. Again, it's a waiting. They are waiting to be born. But there is another sense of the word amber. If we look into Shurbindo's uh, visions, uh, colors and visions. So yellow which starts from the illumined mind onwards and climbs right up to the supramental gold. So these are again children who are beings who have waited from uh, centuries. They have been staying in the higher states of consciousness. They have arrived there in, by previous yoga and have been waiting for this moment to come down upon earth. I'll read the three lines with yes. the amber. Yeah. <clears throat> I saw the omnipotence flaming pioneers over the heavenly verge, which turns towards life, come crowding down the amber stairs of birth. There is another beautiful thing we will notice right through in Shurabindo's writings, especially in his poetry, that there is a consistency of colors and, uh, you know, the mood, what he's describing. So here we see a number of references to fire and the color of fire, whether it's amber or, you know, the fire within them, the... Dionysian cup of joy and the mystic fire, hmm. uh, fiery floods. So all through you will see that there is a link to fire. And fire is the one which builds the form. So these are children who are going to come. Uh, sometimes I say that imagine, you know, um, one of the um, old time sadhaks, Duman Bhai, many of hmm. us, of course, must have met him, wonderful oh, yeah. person. He was also one of the trustees, very unassuming person and... Um, he knew literally his time of death. It is said that he had the gift of Ikshamrityu. It's quite likely given the way he left his body. So Dhyuman Bhai, when somebody asked him during the last few days, he said, um, yes, I'll go, but I'll come back soon. Now, sometimes I wonder to do her work. Now, sometimes I wonder when a person who has developed to that extent, with that kind of consciousness, imagine Amritda who left his body in 60s, but at 14 he had recognized that the divinity of Sri Aurobindo and he had foreseen the coming of the avatar. Now at 14, what kind of exceptional children, you know, they were. Yes. Now, obviously they are not going to rest. He is the person about whom mother said he was the first and the last manager of the ashram. There is no other manager who is going to be known as manager of the ashram when somebody asked her. Now, when these children are born again, what a tough time the parents are going to have. That's <laughs> what I wonder. Because they are not going to be put into any frames. They are so liberated inside. Mm. 
so this is these are the children who are going to come giving going to give a very tough time to the parent this is exactly what the mother spoke to udar when he asked mother about these children that's when she said the children born after the supramental manifestation and especially after 1967 are very special especially to the devotees that also she mentioned and then she says however you must know and understand that it will be very difficult to bring up these children they are not going to follow norms and conventions because they have come with their own inner law it's like a chimpanzee bringing up a human child so it's that the difference is going to be like that mm. the difference in consciousness and be very difficult for the parents to understand you know we are not addressing this issue at all uh, i have been to so many places schools and colleges and all this discussion takes place methods of teaching but they are all outdated and mother spoke about it that nothing is going to work which belongs to the old way you may have seminars and workshops it won't work because they are different children you don't teach a human child the way you teach a monkey it just won't work so we have to discover the new way and the only way we can discover the new way is by becoming the new way otherwise there is no other way <laughs> this morning i was behind uday and priya and their little daughter rishika on the way to darshan and that little one was endless energy she went all around and found every flower on the ground collected it then when we entered mother's salon she would touch each photo to her head and then she touched the chair and they scolded her like anything didn't bother her at all <laughs> she she went right on and and touched something else because they feel so close intimate they don't uh, feel the distance that we create oh mother is there like some mother superior sitting out there and we have to be full of that or they don't feel they feel intimate they feel that kind of you know yes now what happens is now these children are going to come sure in this four scene but when these children are going to come there has to be the mother who is going to handle these children so that's where now we are going to read ashupati invoking the divine mother to come down because he has four scene this coming and they can come only when without the mother there is no child only when the mother takes a human body that these children can come down quite naturally drawn in the wake of the divine advent and that's what we are going to read very powerful lines heavy unchanged ways till the imperfect world and again and again this is the beauty of shurbindo his compassion no one has thought about the world felt about the world in this way he is uh, doesn't belong to just a limited set of human beings called his disciples and devotees he belongs to i mean the whole humanity he is aspiring for the splendid youth of time has passed and failed heavy and long are the years our labor counts and still the seals are firm upon man's soul and very is the ancient mother's heart ancient mother is mother earth she is waiting some children out of my womb will be born who will change me who will understand what i am aspiring for she is waiting so she is tired at one place she says ancient and very and invincible still she doesn't mm. give up yes, yes. <laughs> when he talks about mother earth yes. so she is waiting mother earth that one day these children will be born so ancient mother is waiting and now comes these magical lines which uh, to my sense of both hearing and understanding and reading surpass anything you can find in any of the upanishads and i am saying this because you know with full responsibility and i feel it's important to uh, bring that out you know one of the most musical upanishads for example is the isha upanishad if you go through it so musical um, even the kane has there are passages which have wonderful rhythm in it but look at now this uh, this passage surpasses anything that one may have in fact isha upanishad has those lines almost from where this begins hiranmayena patrena satyasya pihitam mukham 
तत्वम पूषण पावरनु सत्य धर्माए दृष्टे सो द ऋषि इज एस्पायरिंग यज्ञवल दैट ओ ट्रूथ डिफेंडेड इन दाई सीक्रेट सन द लॉ ऑफ ट्रूथ डिफेंडेड गार्डेड हिडन बिहाइंड द फेस ऑफ सन गोल्डन लिड रिवील यो दाई सेल बिकॉज वी वॉन्ट टू नो वॉट इज द वे टू लिव अपॉन अर्ट्स ए वेरी प्रैक्टिकल लाइन आई वॉन्ट टू नो वॉट इज ट्रूथ वॉन्ट फ्रॉम अर्स सत्य धर्म आए नॉट वॉट माई पेरेंट्स माई सोसाइटी माई पीपल दैट वॉन्ट्स वॉट इज ट्रूथ वॉन्ट ऑफ मी सत्य धर्म आए नाउ यू सी इट स्टार्ट फ्रॉम दे ओ ट्रूथ डिफेंडेड इन दाई सीक्रेट सन वॉइस ऑफ अ माइटी म्यूजिंग्स इन शट हेवेंस on things withdrawn within her luminous depths o wisdom splendor mother of the universe creatrix the eternal's artist bride linger not long with thy transmuting hand pressed vainly on one golden bar of time as if time dare not open its heart to god you see what what um, plain it has gone to is not not just asking for me tell me the law of truth he is saying come down and change change this world into the law of truth look at the wideness of the fire it's not just a little aspiration going up it is an inferno the whole earth as if is aspiring through ashpati come down and change you know we read about this in the puranas that the earth goes and prays to the lord please come down and change this earth is there in every avatar this is the beginning and that story is coming here in this way now but how does the earth go he is embodying the anguish of the earth and the aspiration and he is saying come down because nothing is impossible for you and this is something to always remember and she been there several times says there is nothing which is impossible for the divine mother it is we who are so limited in our receptivity in our um, faith in our trust but there is nothing impossible and once she gives the sanction the mother chapter 3 where he says for mm-hmm. the grace of the divine mother is nothing as the fiat of the supreme and now or tomorrow its effect is is inevitable nothing can stop it so he is calling the intervention of the divine mother that's been long 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 you only can come and break the seal because she has said it it will happen but after long passage of time so he is saying but what is time <laughs> time is your slave of course you can compress it so that's what he is calling her o radiant fountain of the world's delight world free and unattainable above O bliss, who ever dwellest deep hid within, while men seek the outside and never find. Touch of the divine mother, which gives source of all joy. She says in one of her prayers, I think it's the second last prayer, twenty eighth December, or probably, in the prayers and meditation, where she says there is a power, which. you cannot find anywhere there is a thirst for love which cannot be quenched in any way there is a peace that one finds nowhere not even in death and it goes on like that there is a no knowledge that no philosophy can possess and that at the end says it is the power the knowledge the love the bliss that flow from the divine grace so he is asking for the intervention of grace and that grace and that bliss which is hid deep within in kathopanishad when uh, nachiketa asks yama tell me the secret of immortality so he gives many many hints but one of the sweetest hint is says you know there is aditi seated in your heart this is that thou seekest <laughs> he says if you find her immortality and everything else is there uh, quite naturally he says you know there is aditi seated in your heart this is that thou seekest and here he is saying O bliss, who ever dwellest deep hid within, so many ways he is describing the divine mother. But men seek the outside, outside and never find. Even physical manifestation of divine mother, she has said several times. You think I am this? Very relevant to seventeen November. You think I am this? Because people used to feel somebody who who is physically meeting her more often is more close to her. Human mind. 
now we have another way those who are living in pondicherry are closer to her <coughs> there also have gradations those who are working near the samadhi or inside mother's room they are god's own blessed children <laughs> whereas mother kept clarifying repeatedly and who knows the more difficult cases are kept more near to the physician you know <laughs> very often maheshwari ji used to say this <laughs> once he said half jokingly and half seriously you know i had just started coming uh, to ashram and he said people think that we are here because of something special he said we are here because of a uh, special difficulty <laughs> so i didn't understand what is meant but over a period of time and then mother herself said each one of you represents a impossibility first she said then she said difficult we worked out worked out yeah. so at one level it's something wonderful because you know each one of us bears the cross and we have come here for it to be resolved but at the same time the real nearness is within even when somebody said i saw the mother in dream so shrivinder says it is not enough to see the mother in dream you must see her within in your heart and feel her inside this is the real thing so he is revealing that thou art hidden inside man but man is seeking you outside and never finds naturally world free look at this line world free and unattainable above no amount of tapasya the last thing about all our human efforts put together is actually nothing uh, today only morning i was discussing look at human effort oh some human being is sitting doing meditation doing nishkam karma seva remember and offer all this now what are you trying to come in contact with we just imagine the material universe and the power and knowledge which is behind it this is just one material universe the vital universe the mental universe and they are still in ignorance and the supreme power which is beyond it this little human consciousness is trying to come in contact with that through some one hour of meditation and nishkam karma it is good it should be done but ultimately it is grace and in the last analysis one finds any amount of human effort ultimately it is grace because she is unattainable above world free none of the world's processes through which you can really reach her world free there's that story about the fellow who goes around asking everyone yeah have you seen god have you seen god have you seen god and then one day he realizes he was here and i knew him not yes so this world free also reminds me of the anecdote everyone we are aware that mother wrote in her diary what she experienced when she saw shurbindo very well known so shurbindo was asked what did he experience because he didn't note it in his diary <coughs> what did you experience when you saw the mother oh, yes. marinda his brother yes. asked him so shurbindo said mira is born free <laughs> she is free <laughs> she is free from very birth she has no need to take this bondage she is born free so you also said he had never seen anyone anyone surrender, surrender so completely That's right possible. down to the physical cells of the body and therefore he knew that the time has come for the life divine to be established upon earth but this is the precondition yes a complete surrender right from the highest heights to the <laughs> smallest cell yes. mother describes it very differently with all her humility since when i came to india i had a bag full of i mean not bag full plenty of experiences she had she was an adept in buddhist yoga she had perfected the yoga of the gita she had the experience of the yoga kundalini awakening to its utmost and when she read uh, swami vekananda's book on raj yoga she said oh there is somebody who can explain all this. <laughs> all this she had all these experiences and many more she describes some of them in yes. prayers and meditations and when she came here she knew that the work is now in matter so she just renounced everything and then she says then i learned what is known in india as renouncing your siddhis and experiences see it is easy to renounce this mud of which we are made and make big thought about renunciation i always feel you know it is really absurd 
when people say oh sometimes they have asked me also you have renounced world i said no no i mean have <laughs> what renounced <laughs> how can you say when you you have left something much inferior for something far superior and you say you have renounced <laughs> it's absurd this is not renunciation <laughs> renunciation is what she has made that she has renounced all the glorious liberties of heaven and come down touch the space this is renunciation mystery and muse with heretic tongue incarnate the white passion of thy force mission to earth some living form of thee one moment fill with thy eternity it's enough divine does not need to actually this is a very interesting question shobindo raises in essays on the gita that you know things like social change and intellectual change change in even uh, working of uh, comments and humanity divine need not come down he can do it right from within so why does he come down she says every time he comes it is to transform matter the whole problem lies there and the secret lies there that's why he takes a human body otherwise he can do everything so that's where she he speaks about that come down incarnate otherwise there is no need to incarnate in fact his vibhutis will do look at you know mm. in the indian context we use the word vibhutis is there in western context but we don't use the word vibhuti there now look at entire mughal empire when the time came all that you needed was two great beings who were open to the influx of ma bhavani shiva ji on this side and guru gobind singh on the other side that was enough a whole mughal empire is gone so these kind of things the divine need not come down but when it is a working on matter and transformation of matter the real difficulty that's when he comes one moment fill with thy eternity that's enough it will have repercussions for ages to come let thy infinity in one body live all knowledge wrap one mind in seas of light all love throb single in one human heart And several times the mother speaks of this infinity inside her and it was so difficult she says sometimes uh, it, towards the later part incidentally she says they are saying i am growing old but i feel much more powerful i can see with much greater clarity actually she was transiting from the old body into the new one if you really read through the agenda it's very clear so she was transiting and people were seeing the outer body and they felt that all that she is saying and doing is from the outer and with of course she is the divine mother something within but she had already started developing the supramental senses right expressing them and she says that they think that i don't know anything but i am much more aware but they are seeing only the outer body so this body was being used for the transmutation and uh, as i keep uh, i mean this is my personal revelation one may say uh, one may share it or not because there are number of opinions and view points each has its own uh, whatever truth behind it relative truth my own view is this not a day of maha samadhi it's the day of transmutation this is the day when mother plunged into the blindest alley of death and immersed through the other end in a victorious way this she had started in 1962 1962 onwards mother says uh, there is a very interesting conversation another way to die she speaks of that then when she speaks about death she says now i can say it because now i am on the other side i can see it from the side of death because she had already gone into that realm after 62 when she yes. stopped coming down yes. you know that's when after that the mother did not come down she would give the balcony darshan so that's why you see two balconies one is the previous one and the second one when uh, higher at the second floor level and she didn't come down and she completely stayed there because the yoga of the cells was going on so all her conversations are now from the other side she is going deeper and deeper and as she went further and further bearing all the pains of the darkness and inconscient alive see this was the difference shurbindo absorbed all this pain of the inconscient 
and the material body broke and as a result of that the super mind first time the descent took place was on 5th december in matter 29th february is the manifestation but the descent first time is in matter is on 5th december but the challenge before mother was that the body should not break and she has to continue and shurvind had foreseen it and that's why he said your body is more prepared than mine otherwise everything else was same same experience mother also speaks about how thin this line is when she's this way there's extreme yes. pain when there's when she's a yes. little bit this way there's all the glory all, all and the beauty glory. it's she was on that edge which yes. you were mentioning yes and then through so this passage went on and on and on till finally see there is the other end from which you emerge and it's such a glory of glories and human vision has to adjust and accommodate uh, i think the first time that she is revealed to one of these sadhaks is within two days when um, i think it was amal kiran's wife if i am not mistaken she was sitting and meditating i mean feeling very sad i think it was 20th november around that time and suddenly she has she sees the mother she says why are you saying i'm here i'm right there just the same same thing nalini the recounts in a vision in 1974 mm. then we see champak lal and many others having you know experiences of this kind yes. of the golden body and i'm sure humanity is now because he has gone far ahead 10000 years ahead <laughs> so we have to catch up but she is right there they could have done this process earlier also but then the gap would have been too big that's what they mentioned that we had to carry humanity together because had we transformed our body there would have been no connect there was no way that human consciousness would have been able to connect with our body i mean how much does an ant connect with a human being it can bite of course that's a different story <laughs> we too can trouble the divine with all our <laughs> nonsensical thing but after all it's a glory of glory so now what will happen is the human eyes the human system because not just the eyes the entire system has to learn to adapt to this tremendous consciousness otherwise it will just break down i mean this is the same reason why god doesn't give his vision to anyone and everyone all the time after all he is the only reality why should he hide he doesn't want to hide the problem is actually he doesn't hide <laughs> in a certain sense the problem is that our eyes and our consciousness is not ready to behold but now the same process has happened even at the material level still our matter has to go further this is something very similar which amal kiran also wrote in one of his essays maybe a couple of 100 years and already human eyes and vision this is going to change our consciousness will change the organs will change and then that touch will feel more and more in the body not just inside but also in the body so this is the great process and look at all knowledge at one place nalini dar uh, you know says you know mother once told me when she had come in the beginning she told him you know i have read all the philosophies and at one point of time you know <laughs> very modestly <coughs> and then only the reminds that uh, you know he reminiscences and she says actually it was her humblest way of telling me not to have intellectual pride because nalida who had a turn towards knowledge so she just gently said you know i have read all these things <laughs> if you read some of her writing i mean conversations words of long ago oh yes you are suddenly it's like mind blowing some of them abstruse problems and you know how she has uh, it's only somebody who is completely crystal clear about these things that you can uh, give a key like that and she and she had to keep aside all that because it's not through the pride of the intellect so she tells him gently and he understood he says yes it was her way of pointing out so all knowledge and we know her love of course all love throbs single in one human heart and at the place in savitri the whole wide world to take refuge in her single heart when people wanted to come to pondicherry our ravindra ji's family mm. so ravindra ji was the person giving work to everyone very close to mother and he asked mother my family now wants to come what do i do dilemma because he had left everyone and come 
So mother didn't say that, you know, cut your connection, you have, you know, detachment, none of those things. This is my child, I would like to accommodate the whole world in Pondicherry. Look at the answer. But since our means are limited, <laughs> that is our problem. But we hope that one day, as many people could come and find. And in her own way, she is taking care of everyone. So, you know, what a heart it is. Even the dog, the cats, the mm. uh, buddha, the donkey, the monkey, the ape, the crow, trot, the crow. The crow the squirrel, the lizard, who didn't find refuge with her? And she would say, I am the mother. The crow won't eat from Champaklalji because one day mother didn't come out to give him. Yeah, every day, Blackie, his name was Blackie. Yes. So she would come out and feed him every day. She has, you see, by calling him Blackie, this is the initiation of anti-racism. <laughs> <laughs> Divine mother's favorite. I would like to be called Blackie, you know, the name would resonate with somebody whom mother fed with her own hands. And one day the mother, you know, was busy or probably, you know, she was not coming out. So Champaklalji, as the most obedient child of the mother, took the bread and went. No, the crow didn't eat. <laughs> what a faithful crow. And how stupid human beings that we sacrifice our pot of birthright for a pot of porridge. <laughs> that story of Bible. We so readily give away our birthright for a pot of porridge. This one, Mother has described this story. So such is the love she would bring. Immortal, treading the earth with mortal feet. All heaven's beauty crowd in earthly limbs. This is beyond imagination. Surinna Johar Taraji's father, when he came, and first time he had a glimpse of her, his instant reaction was, oh, I have never seen such a beauty anywhere. So different beings have perceived her. So she came in all her radiant splendor of beauty. Omnipotence, girdle with the power of God. Movements and moments of a mortal will. Pack with the eternal might one human hour. And with one gesture change all future time. So this one human hour, earthly life, hundred years. She has done it, changed it. Now everything is set and it's just going to go on. We All that we need to do is now grow more and more sincere. See, another way to look at it is very simply, why did Sri Krishna leave all the gopis midnight in Vrindavan and went away? Because they were too much holding the body. So, it is his departure that created, as Shurabindu says, bhakti. Before that, in the Vedas and Upanishads, you have mainly knowledge. There is hint of bhakti. But bhakti manifested with Krishna. The moment he departed, all those gopis, where is Krishna? So, you know, when the divine seemingly withdraws from the earthly scene, it is so that we can learn to catch him in the true way. And that way is the psychic way. But there is no other way. Now you can't just go in the morning and have a balcony darshan. That's what people were doing. Now you have to have the darshan inside. And it's no more morning 6 o'clock. It can be any time. As he says, Sri Aurobindo is so accessible at the Samadhi yes. that earlier you would write a letter and though he would act, people were complaining. You have not replied. Yeah. One day has passed. <clears throat> what is the urgency? Urgency? I need a table and the table has not yet come. You need to sanction <laughs> I have given a very big comment on somebody's poetry. You need to reply. <laughs> Urgency. You, you have a Sunday. That's how disciples wrote. <laughs> Shubindo's interesting reply. That, uh, you know, we thought on Sundays you would be little free. Shubindo says, unfortunately, every disciple <laughs> thinks that. <laughs> they, <laughs> so they flood his basket of letters on Sundays. Thinking that Sundays will be a real, as if God takes a holiday on Sunday. <laughs> So, that's how. So, that one hour is enough. Let a great word be spoken from the heights. And one great act 
unlock the doors of fate. So this is how we have to look at it. Now we have to grow up to that state where we can directly connect. Bridges have been formed from 56 onwards. All more, Many of her conversations, she is speaking of different bridges that she is building between the new um, consciousness and the human. So these bridges now we have to walk. Shall we read few more lines and stop? And <coughs> or I, th I think then probably, you know, because uh, Brother Narad wants to read something beautiful on this day. So here we'll close for our regular reading. This is Narad's admonition to Savitri's mother, the queen. Because she has asked Savitri to choose another man. This fellow is going to die in one year, and, and what are you going to do? Be a widow or commit sati or whatever. And she goes through argument after argument. And he tells her, Queen, strive no more to change the secret will. Time's accidents are steps in its vast scheme. This uh, one line is important because people yes. often raise yes. this question about mother's departure. Even yesterday somebody mailed me that was it an accident, was the X responsible, was Y responsible. I said leave aside whatever you have read or not, just remember it is the Divine Mother whose Leela is going on. Nothing will happen ultimately but what she has yes. not will. So all these ideas that you know, there was somebody who should have, they, they should have left her body in a cataleptic trance or this trance. Nobody's mind will be inspired to do otherwise because the very source of omnipotence is right there. So. I'll move on a little bit because yeah. it's a long yeah. passage. <clears throat> Sometimes one life is charged with Earth's destiny. It cries not for succor from the time-bound powers. Alone, she is equal to her mighty task. Intervene not in a strife too great for thee, a struggle too deep for mortal thought to sound. Its question to this nature's rigid bounds, when the soul fronts nude of garbs, the infinite. And then these are the last lines that Sri Aurobindo wrote in Savitri. Yes. As a star, uncompanioned, moves in heaven, unastonished by the immensities of space, traveling infinity by its own light, the great are strongest when they stand alone. A God-given might of being is their force. A ray from self's solitude of light, the guide. The soul that can live alone with itself meets God. Its lonely universe is their rendezvous. A day may come when she must stand unhelped on a dangerous brink of the world's doom and hers, carrying the world's future on her lonely breast, carrying the human hope in a heart left soul to conquer or fail on a last desperate verge, alone with death and close to extinction's edge. Her single greatness in that last dire scene, must cross alone a perilous bridge in time and reach an apex of world destiny where all is won or all is lost for man. In that tremendous silence, lone and lost, 
of a deciding hour in the world's fate, in her soul's climbing beyond mortal time, when she stands soul with death or soul with God, apart upon a silent, desperate brink, alone with herself and death and destiny, as on some verge between time and timelessness, when being must end or life rebuild its base, alone she must conquer or alone must fall. No human aid can reach her in that hour. No armored god stand shining at her side. Cry not to heaven, for she alone can save. For this the silent force came missioned down. In her the conscious will took human shape. She only can save herself and save the world. O oh, Queen, stand back from that stupendous scene. Come not between her and her hour of fate. Her hour must come, and none can intervene. Think not to turn her from her heaven-sent task. Strive not to save her from her own high will. Thou hast no place in that tremendous strife. Thy love and longing are not arbiters there. Leave the world's fate and her to God's sole guard. Even if he seems to leave her, to her lone strength, even though all falters and falls and sees an end and the heart fails and only are death and night, God given, her strength can battle against doom, even on a brink where death alone seems close, and no human strength can hinder or can help. Think not to intercede with the hidden will. Intrude not twixt her spirit and its force, but leave her to her mighty self and faith. Thank you. Love the mother. Mm -hmm. Love her with all your being. Mm 